Well, originally, uh, I was involved as the Associate General Counsel at United Technologies Corporation, and I was responsible for compliance, which was government contract compliance, the federal acquisition regulations. And compliance is a big piece of doing business with the federal government. And back around the 1985, 86 timeframe, there was a lot of uh, concern with respect to the illegal activities of corporations and that in effect, they weren't following the compliance requirements of, com of, the, of the Department of Defense and other organizations within the federal government. And so we were heavily involved in making sure, and I was heavily involved in making sure that UTC was being compliant when they were doing business with the federal government. Uh, that compliance generated into a period when the government was claiming the corporations were committing fraud, waste, and abuse, and corporations had to, uh, in effect, answer those questions with respect to fraud, waste, and abuse by coming up with compliance programs, code of conduct, having somebody responsible for the compliance program, uh, making sure that they do investigations when they do something wrong, making voluntary disclosures, and I just gravitated from being the Associate General Counsel uh, UTC for government contract to the Associate General Counsel for compliance. Every company has to have a compliance program. They have to follow the statutes, the rules, and the regulations. They put out policies and they demand that their employees follow those policies. That's the compliance program. And so I, I don't think you can exist in as an organization, as a business, as a government, as, as any entity without a compliance program. The next step is to say, reputationally, who do we want to be? How do companies want to be perceived? How does an organization want to be perceived? Do they want to be known as the environmental company that, that, that is destroying the environment? Or do they want to be known as the, the company that never cares about charitable organizations or volunteerism? Do they want to be known about a company that, that doesn't have any, um, a, any concept of their community and being a part of the community? That's all part of the kind of the, the mantra of this is, this is who we are. This is how we want to be perceived. When you add that element into it, you're really adding an element of ethics, uh, business ethics. when we understand that individuals throughout the world may have a corrupt purpose and therefore good strong compliance programs and good strong open communication in an organization is what stops something like that from happening because in 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 big corporate crimes one individual can't do it by themselves they do it with a whole bunch of other people as part of the system and those people have to have an outlet where they can pick up the phone and say, my boss is asking me to do something. I think it's wrong. Can you help me? The challenge today is being able to teach people that, and, and, and teach management that they need to allow people to raise their hand and say, I see something. I have a problem. We've been watching on television day in and day out for the last month, two months, that we want to know who the whistleblower is in, in, in the U.S. government right now with respect to what's going on in, in the Ukraine. The issue is not who the whistleblower is. The issue is what did the whistleblower bring forward? What are the facts? And if the facts are borne out, we don't need to know who the individual is that raised their hand. We need to know that the facts are not borne out or the facts are borne out, and we need to deal with the facts as they are. There is a tendency to say, you know, let's kill the messenger. And we want to be in a position where today the challenge is to encourage the messenger to come forward and have a structure in place that can actually review what the messenger has said and either make a decision that the messenger was accurate or they didn't have enough information and they weren't accurate and then fix the problem if it needs to be fixed. So getting human beings to believe that it's okay to raise your hand and say there's a problem and not attack the person that raised their hand, attack the issue, is probably the biggest challenge. I would encourage every ethics officer 
to think in terms of being able, when they're telling the board and their management team about issues, that they're also telling them about all of the good things that are happening and that people raise their hand and we found a problem and we solved it. BP tells a story that is just so good um, that it needs to be told over and over again in all other companies, in all other locations. Uh, they tell a story about a mechanic in, in one of their, um, at, at one of their airports uh, that were managing some airplanes that were carrying fuel. And the, the pilot had called ahead and said, I need to refuel the airplane, I need this kind of fuel. And the, and the mechanic said, that's the wrong kind of fuel for that plane. And he said, listen, I know what I'm doing. This is what I want. And the plane came in and the mechanic refused to put that fuel in the plane. Within minutes of, of doing that, after being dressed down by the pilot, the pilot recognized that he was talking about the wrong plane. And that had the mechanic done what he was supposed to do by order, that that plane would have, would have gone down and people would have died. And he stuck his hand up and said, you're wrong and I'm not gonna do it. <clears throat> and he's now being touted in the company as a hero. And we need more of those heroes and we need more of those stories because employees need to feel comfortable at saying, what you're asking me to do is wrong and I won't do it. The, the, there's a couple of things. One is um, we all have this capacity of thinking that we know best, you know, that we can, we can fix our own problems, and we don't. I mean, we, we've got to come to that kind of fundamental idea that there are better ideas out there and that you may not necessarily have invented those better ideas. Um, corporations and organizations have been very jealous about guarding their information, guarding what they do. Um, the beauty of, of, of trying to establish a new function where we're writing the rules as we go along was that we didn't know what we were doing and therefore any help you can get would be, would be great. And so early on in our careers as, as pioneers back when, we were willing to share, which law departments not, were not necessarily willing to share with other law departments and, excuse me, HR departments were not willing to share. Uh, and engineering departments were not willing to share because it was the family jewels. Well, because we didn't have any family jewels to share, to, I mean, to, to, to worry about, we were willing to share what we did and, and how we did it. Um, I think that's become the mantra for the ethics and compliance organization. I wish more companies would talk about their core values. Um, I, think, I think that says it all because the first question is, do you have core values? And the second question is, how are you managing your core values? And the third question is, did you really write your core values for your, all of your stakeholders? So do you have core values that help your shareholders and your employees and your customers and your suppliers, and your community? I mean, do, do your core values touch all those? If you, if you have core values that touch on all of those and, and they, they work, those core values work for the product or, or for the service that you're providing, whether you're a not-for-profit or a for-profit or for the government, I honestly believe that you're gonna be ethical, you're gonna be compliant, you're gonna, be, you're, gonna, you're gonna have sustainability, you're gonna do all the things that make a company great besides having a, the best elevator or the best, software or the best uh, automobile Be because somebody else is going to make another better automobile and somebody else is going to make another better elevator but somebody else is not going to be you otis you bp you general motors and if you really care about that name you care about your core values everything else kind of falls into place